Hey guys, welcome to Reality Check. I'm Huang Jiyuan. Before we start, I'd like to show you a video. See the spots that light it up randomly in the video? Those are the first confirmed use of U.S. cluster bombs by the Ukrainian forces against the Russians. According to the Russian Defense Ministry, so far, one Russian re war reporter was killed and three were wounded by the weapon. Cluster bombs usage dates back to World War II. Back then, Germany first used it against the United Kingdom and the Soviet Union. And because of its unique shape, it was nicknamed Butterfly Bomb. Cluster bombs are weapons that open up in midair and release tens or hundreds of submunitions. According to the Cluster Munition Coalition, they could, quote, saturate an area up to the size of several football fields. People within the area are very likely to be killed or seriously injured. When the United States announced that it's going to deliver such weapon to Ukraine, it caused an uproar. United Nations Secretary General rejected its use. A Quinnipiac poll showed 51% of Americans disapproved this decision. And major American allies and NATO members like Canada, Germany, Spain and the United Kingdom opposed it as well. They are extremely dangerous and they can put uh, the lives of uh, civilians at risk very badly. So we are absolutely not happy with the decision of the United States in this regard. And we do see it as a decision which can bring further suffering and further casualty. A tricky thing about cluster bombs is that they can continue to kill half a century after they were launched. Sometimes the submunitions from the cluster bombs don't detonate as they should. They stay in the ground, dormant for decades, and explode when someone comes into contact with them. You can find real-world examples in Southeast Asia. Between 1979 and 2021, these stud bombs killed nearly 20,000 people in Cambodia and injured more than 45,000. During the Vietnam War, the United States dropped more than 270 million cluster bombs in Laos. Around 50,000 have died because of these unexploded submunitions. A decade ago, it was just a normal day. Young boys doing what they usually do, playing, throwing around a small round object they found in the forest. Intrigued, they tried to cut it open with a knife. A few strikes, then an earth-shaking explosion. A sound that haunts still, even to this day. I picked up my grandson's wounded body. He died from the explosion. I always think about this incident when I work, eat, I always think about it. Say Saman has been doing this for 28 years. It's a painstaking task, using detectors to manually map every centimeter of the ground. On a normal day, her team finds around 10 to 20 cluster munitions. On a good day, more than 100. Say Saman said that only 1% of the contaminated land in Laos has been cleared and that it is impossible to clear Laos of all these bombs. This is what people in the conflict zone will face for several decades after the cluster bombs were launched. When the United States made the announcement of sending cluster munitions to Ukraine, it claimed the dot rate of the bomb is less than 2.35 percent. But the 2022 Congressional Research Services report on cluster munitions stated that some manufacturers claim a submunition failure rate of 2 percent to 5 percent, whereas mine clearance specialists have frequently reported failure rates of 10% to 30%. Submunitions lacking a self-destruct capability, referred to as dumb munitions, are of particular concern because they can remain a hazard for decades, thereby increasing the potential for civilian casualties. These, cr these weapons are uh, they're war crimes, inherently war crimes, because they're indiscriminate weapons. The Geneva Convention, which governs the rules of law, uh, requires all the parties at war to take uh, serious, sustained, and comprehensive measures to protect civilian life. The New York Times editorial wrote, sending cluster munitions to Ukraine amounts to a clear escalation of a conflict that has already become far too brutal and destructive, and that these weapons are morally repugnant for the indiscriminate carnage it can cause long after the combatants have gone. Morally repugnant indiscriminate carnage. The United States made an unfortunate and sad decision. Now the question is, will the global community remain a passive observer of this horrific choice? Or will the international community hold it accountable for these actions?